Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft PowerPoint. In this tutorial we're going to look at formatting the slide background, looking at slide designs and putting pictures into the slide background. So first of all we have three slides about the Battle of Waterloo, French forces, British forces. Design at the top is where all the themes are located so these are all pre formatted design themes these ones at the top are custom designs that I have created and this one is the default office design that you have when you open PowerPoint so first of all I want to create a background color myself so I'm going over to this side and click on format background now you've got some options here to format the background, so solid fill, select a colour from there, blue, format background. Next slide, gradient fill, so different styles, you can have preset styles, you've got linear, radial etc, from there you can select and I'll put it on radial, direction like that and then these gradient stops so I'm just going to pull a couple of these off and start from scratch so you click where you would like the position to be so there and then you change the color so you create a gradient from that point so I'll go dark blue then I'll click another one and then I'll pick a different color that's quite nice and then another one I'll pick red and that's how that works so very unique and pretty background. Now on this one I'm going to use a picture. This is not a picture on the actual slide, it's a picture in the background so sometimes these can get stretched. What What is shown first off is the textures that have been around for years and years and years. These are textures and this is um, a fossil fish. But none of these are any of these, I'm not going to use any of these, I'm going to use a picture, so a picture from file and then I have to find photos that I want to use which is going to be photos Waterloo and that one maybe, charge of the Scots Greys at Waterloo. Now when you put a picture in the background and that one doesn't look too stretched you can see that it's clashing with the text so what you can do is use this transparency bar to fade that out a bit so it's more of a background like that and then you get the best of both worlds but like I said in the previous section always check in full screen whether that's going to work or not and that does work actually so that's quite good I quite like that myself press escape to come back down so that's you doing the backgrounds on all these different slides. Now, if you apply a theme, a preset theme from this list, that is going to clash or potentially clash with your background. So if I click on this one, which is a dark theme, what's happened here? Let's get rid of ideas. So my first slide, it's just moved that up. It's not too, not too intrusive. The second slide, Let's turn that black and move the font all over the place so that's that's kind of a bit messy and then you've got this little black blob coming out of the side and then this one it hasn't really changed it too much but what I'm trying to say here is that I think you could either do a design on a slide a theme on a slide or you do it yourself now to reset backgrounds you can click this button that'll take the Waterloo off, the Waterloo picture off. If I go to themes and select the office default theme that will apply to all the slides and take all of those off and then I can reset the background, apply to all slides and then I should be back to square one with just white slides. So that is how you can format the background. Now in terms of designs which I'll cover in a later, a later module, you can actually 
save a theme that you create and then it will become as a custom design like these at the top there and then you can apply that so you can create you can create like a company theme um, some sometimes you see themes that are a bit over the top too many colors and there's not much space to put any text on the slide but we'll cover that in a later session but next I want to talk about slide transition so slide transition is how the slides change over once you're in full screen so at the moment if I go into full screen and just press enter it's just there is no transition they're just appearing there so these are the slide transitions and I tend to always use dissolve because I think that's more professional than some of these other ones but I'll just click on a few so you can see what they look like there's glitter and you've got a duration of that so you can speed that up if I click it again now it goes faster and so on and so on vortex now, to, to me that would be a bit off-putting that's a four minute four second I put that down a bit quicker yeah that's a bit quicker but it's still a bit off-putting and what you don't want to do is to be distracting your audience from what you're talking about by looking at different transitions which is exactly what I did in 1985 when I first saw PowerPoint. I, I can remember sitting in a classroom guessing or trying to guess what was going to happen next. Uh, these are far more superior to those themes that were around in those days, but same problem. Uh, I can't remember what the course was about, but I can remember sitting looking at the, the themes. So I want to use um, Dissolve, which I can't even see. There it is, Dissolve. And I recommend that you apply it to all slides, so all slides, because again, if you have different um, transitions on different slides, it becomes dis a distraction, and that's not what you want. So that is on every slide. So if I put that into full screen, you can see now it dissolves in as you go on to each slide. And you can increase the time by using this time duration button if you think that's too slow or too fast and then apply that to all now on the end of this you've got no sound and you've got advanced slide on mouse click or after a time so if I take that off for a second and say let's put this at one second which is obviously too slow, uh, too quick apply to all now if I put that into full screen that should just go by itself as fast as it can and still applying the themes and still applying the um, transition and then you come down so that's a way of manually setting a time I'm just going to put that back onto mouse click and apply it to all because if I don't it will be on one so they're all off now where you've got sound at the top there you've got all these preset sounds that you can select which I usually tell my classes that these are very old-fashioned in fact these haven't changed for years and usually when people do a PowerPoint course they start putting these on and they are very very irritating now the only way I would put a sound on a PowerPoint these days would be when an audience is coming into the room it's sometimes if you're quite nervous it's a big audience it's quite hard to get their attention when you're ready to start so if you play music at the beginning of, a, of your presentation and then when you're ready to start you stop the music that will automatically make everybody look up and then it's your job then to grab their attention there and then so that's what I'm going to try and do now. So I'm going to other sound, which I am going to put the blue Danube on. So the blue Danube will play on this slide, and then there it's playing there. Now I'm going on to the second slide, and on that one I'm going to say stop previous sound. So when I put this presentation into full screen, there's a the sound playing. So this would which the um, people coming into the auditorium or into the room where you're doing the presentation, saying hello to each other, talking, having a coffee and things like that. When you're ready to go with the presentation, you just press enter, it stops the sound, and this slide wouldn't be French Forces, it would be your first slide. And then it's up to you then to engage with the audience and do your bit. So that's all I want to cover on this little session. So thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.